This video is supported by Brilliant.org. A few weeks ago, NASA announced that the James Webb Space Telescope has been delayed. Again. And this is a huge bummer. The James Webb is one of the most anticipated science projects out there right now, but it has a very complex unfolding process, and they have to make sure they get it right. And the reason for all this unfolding is the James Webb Space Telescope is huge. It's the size of a tennis court. The mirrors on the James Webb are three times the size of Hubble's, and it takes some serious engineering to figure out how to fit that into a standard payload fairing that's only five meters wide. And until we master construction in space, we're just stuck with these kinds of creative solutions. So imagine the creativity involved to launch a telescope the size of a baseball diamond. Because that's a thing. They're working on it right now. The study of exoplanets is only 26 years old, and we've already found so many of them that you can't hardly even keep count anymore. It's generally assumed at this point that every star has at least one planet orbiting around it, and, and just to put the numbers in perspective, in 2015, NASA released a picture from the Hubble Space Telescope of the Andromeda Galaxy that's one of the biggest pictures ever taken. It's 1.5 billion pixels. Every single dot in this photo is a star with multiple planets orbiting around it. No matter how rare life might be, the sheer numbers involved almost guarantee the existence of other life in the universe. The problem is the only life as we know it exists on terrestrial planets like Earth and the terrestrial planets all orbit very close to the star and they're much smaller than the bigger planets like your Jupiters and your Saturns that exist further out in the solar system. That makes it much harder to find. Especially considering that most of our exoplanet hunting methods involve indirect viewing of the planets through gravitational effects that they cause on their stars, which requires them to be much too big to be terrestrial planets, usually more Jupiter-sized planets, or they have to pass in front of the star as a transit and that requires the plane of that solar system to be perfectly in line with us, which, as you can imagine, is incredibly rare. You might ask why we don't just take pictures of these exoplanets, but the thing is, optical imaging is almost impossible because the brightness of the star is over a billion times brighter than the reflection of that star off of a planet. It's like if someone were standing right next to a spotlight, you wouldn't be able to see that person unless you covered up the spotlight. That's why solar eclipses have always been great opportunities to do scientific experiments because you can see things with the sun blotted out that you can't normally see. For example, Sir Arthur Eddington's use of a, an eclipse in 1919 to prove Einstein's theory of relativity. So in theory, if we could create an artificial eclipse for a faraway star, we could actually see rocky Earth-like planets for the first time ever. This is the idea behind the New Worlds mission and the Starshade space probe. The New Worlds mission is comprised of two pieces, a giant solar shade and a conventional optical telescope. And the optical telescope could be one that we already have out there, or it could be a new one that's optimized for this type of mission. But the star of this mission is the star shade. See what I did there? The proposed star shade is 34 meters across, almost the size of a baseball diamond, and it'll position itself 50,000 kilometers away from the telescope between the scope and the star, basically creating an artificial eclipse. This will occult the star enough for the telescope to pick up the faint light of close-up rocky planets and gather direct data about them, including the composition of the atmosphere by reading the spectroscopy of the light reflecting off of it. And the day we find high levels of oxygen in the spectroscopy of an exoplanet? Yeah. There's gonna be some crazy headlines that day. But how you may be wondering, are they gonna possibly get a baseball diamond-sized satellite into outer space? With the ancient art of origami. The design team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory brought in a team of origami specialists, including artist and engineer Robert Salazar, who documented this on his blog. It's super interesting. I've got it linked down below. Starting in 2015, their mission was the following. Must allow the star shade to stow and deploy reliably, fit within a well-defined volume, be foldable from thick material, be foldable from a cone, and remain coupled to the truss with a perfect light seal throughout the deployment. You know, that old chestnut. After working through multiple designs, the one they settled on is known as a curved flasher, which allows the shade to have no breaks in the material and works with any thickness. They started small with paper tests, then scale models, then continue to work their way up. They've currently got it up to five meters in diameter. But it's not enough to just create a giant circle in space. You might have noticed the sunflower shape of the shade. This is because light tends to diffract around solid objects due to the wave nature of photons. The petals in the shade are mathematically designed to break up that diffraction so that the light coming around the shade isn't distorted. These petals are then wrapped around the curved flasher design so when it gets into space, it unfolds like this. So that might 
might look as complicated as the unfolding on the JWST, but there are reasons to believe it might not be as bad. First of all, there's no sensitive equipment on board. This isn't the telescope itself. It's simply a shade, so it doesn't have to protect sensitive instruments inside of it. There might be fewer moving parts and actuators. In the JWST, there's all these specific different things that have to happen. In this one, it seems to happen all in one motion. And since it's folded according to mathematical algorithms, it should evenly and smoothly fold out without a whole lot of force being used. And while I couldn't find any information about what kind of propulsion the star shade would have, I'm gonna assume that it would have some kind of electric ion propulsion, kind of like the Dawn mission that's currently at Ceres. Since the shade will have to move around to get in front of these different stars, I'm imagining that a retro rocket would actually use too much fuel. They wouldn't be able to store enough fuel on there. So this is my assumption. I could be totally wrong. If you know something that I don't, please do share it in the comments. But the star shade really is a game changer in the world of exoplanet astronomy because it can be used with any telescope, including some of the more advanced telescopes telescopes coming out like w first and the James Webb. I mean, combine this with the imaging power of the James Webb and we could actually get a photograph of an Earth-like world around another star. Just try not to touch yourself thinking about that. Plus, if they perfect the project, they could launch multiple star shades to increase our odds even more. And with every Earth-like planet that we find, with every signature of life that we find on a planet, we chip away a little bit more at Drake's equation and get a little bit better picture of our place in the universe. Is life common in the universe? Is it like the life that evolved here? Is intelligent life hit some kind of great filter that prevents them from advancing? Are we alone? Or are there other planets that we could travel to someday? But one of the coolest things about this to me is that a project this big in space is bordering on <laughs> Isaac Arthur Mega Project territory, you know? Uh, we're creating a shade that can block out a star. Once we do something that big, it gives us permission to think even bigger, and that is when science fiction starts to become a reality. And it's all due to a thousand-year-old art form. Now that's some creative thinking. If you think all that is awesome and you want to flex your problem-solving skills and you haven't checked out Brilliant.org, what are you doing with your life? If you thought the astronomy part of this story was cool, there's an entire course on astronomy at Brilliant.org, including a section all about exoplanets, where they are, how we found them, what we're looking for. Did you like the origami bit? Because there's a lot more to origami than just folding paper. There's entire courses in Brilliant.org about geometry that sets the foundational level of understanding that origami is based on. Or maybe you just like creative problem solving. Well, guess what Brilliant has a course on? Problem solving. From fundamental concepts that set a foundation for learning to advanced physics and computation, Brilliant walks you through it in a fun and innovative format that makes these ideas stick. There's a reason why it's called Brilliant. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe and get access to their free weekly puzzles and brain teasers and the first 200 people who sign up for the premium subscription. It gives you access, unlimited access to all of their courses. Get 20% off your subscription for life. Don't just get smarter. Get Brilliant. Brilliant.org slash Answers with Joe. Links down in the description. Thanks so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode and a huge shout out, as always, to my answer files on Patreon who support me in ways that they don't even understand. Uh, there's some new people that have joined the tribe. want to give them a quick shout out and murder their names. There's Gavin Marrer, uh, Marlon Shell, Daryl Warner, Zane Rapa, Simon Hogstrom, uh, Ovid Pope, Nicholas Curtis, Adrian Dieter Biscu, uh, Johan Gergen, Java and the Beanstalk, love it, uh, James Artisan, Noel Rabina, Alan Johns, Andre Sigarola, Oliver Ebbing, and David Donald Moe. All right, cool. Thank you guys so much. And if you would like to join them and get access to some cool perks and things that other people don't get to see, you can go to patreon.com slash Answers with Joe. And t-shirts, as always, available in the store at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, I got many other videos. I invite you to go check those out. And if you like those, please do subscribe. You'll be the first to see my new videos every time they come out Monday and Thursday. Thanks again for watching. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.